Hello, this is Patrick Enega here. I want to talk to you about something that is very important. It is about the next generation fathers. The next generation fathers. I'm going to ask a question as a way of passing my message across to you. The question is this, what did your biological father teach you about being a father to your family? Your family here speaks of your wife and uh, your child or children. What did your biological father teach you? It's a question that I believe every father should answer. Every father should confront this question, should find answer for this question. Why I believe we as fathers should give attention to this question, should confront this question, should find answer, is because if if we are unwilling to confront where we are coming from, the faulty foundation that we have been given about fatherhood and family, we will not be able to be the fathers we are created to be by the Heavenly Father. We might be the fathers we want to be, but not the fathers that the Heavenly Father wants us to be. There is something about the past that will be taken care of before we can press into the future, because before we can have access to the future, some of the challenges we are facing in our, in our family life, especially when it comes to fathering our families, being a father to our families, to our families, they might be connected to the fact that we have a faulty foundation, but we are not properly trained or we are not trained at all to be fathers. This is why I'm bringing this question as a way of preparing us for what lies ahead, preparing us to be able to press into what is in the future for us. What is in the future is simply we getting our sons ready to be fathers, getting our sons ready to do what the Father in heaven wants them to do. The truth is this, and I want, I want to say it as it is, the truth is this, we were not intentionally trained, we were not intentionally trained, taught by our fathers to be fathers. The reason is because the society has already already defined who a father is. So our so our fathers accepted what the society gave to them the definition of who a father is. And what is the definition of the society? The society says that a father is simply a man who has a child or children. This is what our fathers have raised. They believe it that you are a father except you have a, a child or children. So you are not a father. If you don't have a child, the rhetorical question is this, why would, would your father, why would my father train me, teach me how to be a father when I don't have a child? So it's so easy for my father to allow me to grow and become a father by myself. Patrick, when you have a, a child, you become a father. Whatever you need to learn, you learn. Has this really helped us? No. This has not helped us. If we were intentionally trained by our fathers, taught by our fathers how to be how to be fathers, I'm sure we will do a better job. We will do a better job. So we need to start training, equipping the next generation of fathers. From our mistakes, let's start teaching the young men, equipping the young men, equipping our sons to be great fathers. To be great fathers, godly fathers, what this has done, the disadvantage, what it has done for us, or done to us also, is that we as fathers, especially those of us who have no, uh, who have no children yet, I know the Father will give you your children in Jesus Christ's name. We have been robbed of uh, the ministry that is meant for our wives. By this I'm saying, a father 
should not just father his children. A father should father his wife also. But the fact that you have not tried it yet, and the society says you are a father, or till you have you are not a father, or except you have a child, you will not see yourself as one. That is the first thing, and then you will not be able to father your wife because you don't see it as your responsibility. Let me let, let me tell you, the day the day your father-in-law gave his daughter to you in marriage, I also want you to know he gave you a special responsibility, which is he gave you the responsibility to continue what he has been doing, that is to father his daughter. So you are now the father of your wife. You are. We were not intentionally trained. We were not trained to be fathers. Here the scripture speaks to us, Proverbs 22, verse 6. It says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is, when he is old, he will not depart from it. Training is something deliberate, it's something intentional. It's, it, it's, it doesn't happen by chance. You decide what you wish to impart. Then you take a deliberate step to do it. In this case, training up a child the way he should go. So you have to know the way your child should go. You have to know the kind of father the Heavenly Father wants him to be. Then you go hard to get this done. Training your child to be a godly father. Training your son to be a godly father. You mold it. You, you become the pattern. You become the template for your son. Thank you. Heavenly Father, if we do not intentionally, if we do not do this intentionally, train up our children, our young adults, let me not call their children, our young adults, to be godly fathers, to their families, listen, what will happen is this, they will train up themselves with the negative attitude they see in us, they will train up themselves with the negative attitude they see in us. The misunderstanding the home, the way you, you you get angry, coming home coming home late in the night, hanging out with friends instead of the time you should spend with your family, uh, the wrong priority, giving more attention to a set of family members than your family, not being mindful of uh, the hurt of your wife, the pain, the tears of your wife. These are the things your son will pick. And they will think that it is it is no it is the norm the way a man should treat his family. This is why we have to be intentional about training our young men to be fathers. I want to say that the mothers, our wives, they are trying their best because I see today that daughters seem to have not seem they they have better relationship with their mothers than than the, we have with our sons they do so we should think or look at what are we getting wrong why is this so that even some even some of our sons they tend to gravitate towards their mothers than us they want to hang out with their mothers than us so there must be something we are getting wrong yeah must be something we are getting wrong and we have to get it right now I believe that men should not be left alone to become fathers by themselves. Men should not be left alone at all. Because this has not helped us in any way. It has not helped us to be fathers that will care for their families, fathers that will represent the Heavenly Father accurately. I'm going to explain this. I just made a powerful statement there, profound statement. And I'm going to explain this. The scripture has spoken to us clearly that a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. By extension, to his family, Proverbs 29 verse 15. What we were not taught by our fathers, and I believe it, they did not teach us because they did not know. You can't give what you don't have. What we were not taught by our fa biological fathers, they are the things that are confronting us today. They are the things that, are, that have become obstacles in our lives today. We're not taught how to be fathers. I'm repeating myself here. We're not taught how to be fathers. Imagine if you were taught how to be how to be a father. The aspect of being dear for your family, having the heart, 
spending time with your family, providing for your family, above all, representing the Heavenly Father to your family, which is the ultimate. And this is the essence of this message. The, 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 the major assignment, the main assignment of, of a father is to represent the Heavenly Father to his family. In other words, the Heavenly Father will give you his heart, his spirit, his capacity, so that through, through you, your life, your lifestyle, your family, we see the Heavenly Father. Then we know the Father is in the house. Thank God for the food on the table. Thank God for the welfare. Thank God for the things you are able to put on the table for the family. They are all part of it. But the most important thing is the representation. This is the ministry that the Father gave to, to Adam that he lost as a result of the sin of, of, of treason. When Adam sinned against the Father, he lost the power, he lost the ministry, the ministry of representing the Father to his family. And you know exactly what happened in the family of Adam that Cain killed Abel. There was anarchy, lawlessness in his family because he lost, he lost the power. He lost the ministry. Jesus Christ came to restore this ministry. First, he came to restore our relationship to our Heavenly Father, then to empower us, to empower men, to restore us to the ministry of fatherhood, to restore us that we would, we would have the power to be able to represent the Father to our families. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to be the fathers we are created to be. We need the Holy Spirit and we need to surrender to Jesus Christ. We need to surrender to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said in his teaching that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So our journey is to the Father. When we come to Jesus, Jesus takes us on a journey to the Father. As we know the Father, as we know the Father, we we'll learn the Father. We, we exist in relationship with our Father. The ultimate goal of Christianity. The Father will start teaching us, revealing to us how to be fathers to our families, communities, and nations. So this is how we become fathers. No wonder the scripture, book of uh, Proverbs, I'm sorry, please, book of uh, Genesis chapter 17, from verse 1 to 5, the father speaking to Abraham says, I have made you, Abraham, father of many nations. So it is the father who fashioned us, who works in us, who, who turns us into the people he wants us to be. How does this happen? When we turn, turn to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit will reveal the father to us. Let me encourage you. Let me encourage you to turn to Jesus Christ today and, and ask him, make me a father. A father that has the heavenly father's heart and I'm, that I will we be able to represent the father to my family. We need fathers and we need to prepare. We need to equip the next generation of fathers. It is you and I responsibility to do this. I want to pray with you. Father in heaven, I pray for my brother in the name that's above all names. Pray that you strengthen his faith in you. I pray for I pray that you heal his heart, every father wound, that which will not allow him to be the father you want him to be. I pray you take care of it, Heavenly Father. And I pray that you reveal yourself to him. Let him come to that place of the revelation, absolute revelation of the Father, the fatherhood of God. Thank you for giving him the heart, the capacity to represent you. I speak your blessing over his life, your blessing over his family, your blessing over his business, his career. Thank you, gracious Father, for doing him good because he's called by your name. Amen.